the teaching of electricity um, in schools is often notorious for the number of misconceptions that um, children end up with and often teachers as well. And there are several difficulties around the teaching of electricity. Normally we use um, circuit boards, something similar to this. And the problem too with electricity is that it's full of formulae. And the teaching often degenerates into mathematics um, where children are, have a problem and all they do is they pull out the relevant data, plug it into a formula, get the correct answer, but really not understand the concepts that they're working with. In this unit, what I want to try and share with you is a way in which I would go about helping stu students to understand the physics, um, the concepts in electricity. And not use a mathematical approach at all. The mathematics will come later. This circuit board works off household electricity, which in South Africa means 220 volts um, supply. How would I approach this, the teaching this in a conceptual way? Well, I'd start off by talking about where does my power come from? It's from the um, electricity supply and it's 220 volts. What do we mean when we say 220 volts? Well, that's the potential difference. And I'd work to make children understand, well, 220 volts is a measure of how much energy is coming from the power supply. And 220 volts means 220 joules per coulomb. I would talk about charges, coulombs, come running down this. Maybe it's carrying a sack of energy on its back. And if it's 220 volts we're talking about, they'll be carrying 220 joules of energy in each sack and it's one coulomb that's going to go through the circuit. So 220 volts means um, and, um, 220 joules per coulomb. If you've got a torch cell, you've got, it's a one and a half volt. Why? What does that mean? It means I'm only going to get one and a half joules per coulomb out of that cell. So I've got here a 40 watt globe. What is a watt? It's power, it's a unit of power. 40 watts, it's telling me, as I switch on, electricity flows, energy be, is being transformed there. How much energy? Well, if it's 40 watts, it's 40 joules per second. So they, there's meaning behind that term watt. It's so many joules per second. It's how much energy I'm getting here per second. So the little coulombs come up here with uh, 220 joules in their bag. They can dump it here at the rate of 40 joules per second. And then they'll return with no joules left in their bag. So that gives them the meaning of what. There's a current flowing through here. What do we measure current in? It's amps. What is an amp? So if, say two amps are flowing through here. Two amps means two coulombs per second. It gives us a measure of the rate at which electricity is flowing, uh, at what the rate of speed with which these coulombs are moving through here. Let's have a look at a 60 watt globe. It's brighter. Why? Well, it's 60 watts. I'm getting 60 joules per second coming off that one. Why is this one brighter than that one? They're both connected to 220 volts. Well, we'll talk about it and ultimately they'll see, well, there's more energy per second coming out of here than there, so therefore there must be many more coulombs going through here. They're delivering it faster than here. So this has got less resistance to the flow of charges than that. So a 60 watt globe has got less resistance than a 40 watt globe. Um, so we start talking about the concept of resistance to students. The whole concept of power and resistance Let's cement it by bringing in another appliance. This is a kettle. If I read the label underneath, it says 2,000 watts. In other words, 2 kilowatts. What does that mean? It means that if I'm boiling water in here, I need energy. And therefore, it's going to, by connecting to the power supply, I will get 2,000 joules per second. I'm going to boil my water quite quickly. What about the resistance of this? How does the resistance of this kettle compare to the resistance of the bulb? I talk about that with the students. And ultimately they'll see, well, if I want to get more energy there quickly, 
I need lots of coulombs, therefore it must have very little resistance. And out of it they get, the higher the power, the lower the resistance. I haven't resorted to any formulas. It all is basically making sense. They, they, they're understanding from what they're observing what's going on. Once I'm through that, I'll then get into some fun with them using the circuit board. Take 40 watt globe, 60 watt globe, and let's connect them in series. I'd ask them to predict, what do you think we're going to see there? Will one be brighter than the other? Will they both be the same? Because the electricity is going through both of them. What do you think? Very important to get people to predict because then they've got a stake in it. And then I'd switch it on. And wow, it wasn't quite what they expected. The brighter one, the 60 watt before, is now much dimmer than the 40 watt. Why? And we discussed that. And they'll come up with various uh, theories or hypotheses. And most often they say, well, that's where most of the energy is used and the rest gets squandered here. So I'll say, okay, well, should we switch around? What do you think will happen then? And we do that. What do you think will happen now? And when we switch it on, they see it's still the same. The 60 watt is less than the 40 watt. Why is that so? And we'll get into the business of, well, th that's got a different resistance to that. The 40 watt has got a higher resistance than that, so that's where most of the energy is dissipated in a series circuit. Let's take the same bulbs and connect them in parallel, see if there's any difference, and we will then test it. And what do they see? It's a very different story to when they were connected in series. And now, again, the 60 watt is brighter than the 40, what I experienced when I connected them separately. And there'll be a lot of discussion why, what's going on here, and so on. At this point, I haven't involved any mathematics in it. It's all been done through reasoning. Of course, it's very nice to show them about household wiring. If I'm connecting in parallel like that, what happens if one of the bulbs breaks and the other one carries on? We haven't switched off the kitchen. You don't switch your lounge off as well. But if the bulbs are in series, for a start, I'm going to have a very dim kitchen and a very dim lounge, and if one of them goes, the other one goes as well. So the house will always be connected in parallel circuits and not in series circuits. And there are various circuits that you can uh, try with them and always getting them to predict what they think is going to happen. And out of that, lots of discussion once you've tested their prediction. I'm going to try a 60 watt, a 40 watt, and a 100 watt in series. Prediction, what do you think is going to happen? And of course, we test it, and I wonder who got it right. Here's another fun circuit, see if they can predict what they're going to see, but I've connected a 60 watt globe in parallel with a 40 watt and a 100 watt in series. What do you think you're going to see? And that's what they'll see. But what I like about this board, as you can see, everything is very visible. And there's no doubt about brightness and everybody can see the circuit board. Certainly a lot easier than teaching with a conventional circuit board. I've shared my ideas with you. If you've got any comments, questions or ideas, share them via the website. There is a facility there for you. Um, or you can send them to me on my email address. <laughs>